Hello, I am here to discuss about a patient I just operated last week. Now, this was a female, a young, 26 year old female, unmarried, but she was very, very socially embarrassed and had become recluse because she was suffering from big size of breasts. Now, when I say big size of breasts, these breasts were huge, and because of the weight, these breasts were also sagging. So understand, a big huge breast which are sagging, they don't look beautiful, are in fact socially embarrassing for these patients. More so, these excessive large breasts also start causing pain in the neck and shoulders for these individuals. If you see these individuals, they will sit with a slightly hunched up position, their necks are droopy, they get pain, uh, the straps of their bra um, get indented in their shoulders and they are in good amount of trouble. So you see these patients not only need cosmetic improvement, they also need functional improvement. What I'll be talking to you about today is the myths and the fallacies a lot of people think a breast reduction surgery has. So if you are someone who is suffering from huge size of breasts, or know of someone who is suffering from a huge size of breasts, this video is for you. Because I will be sharing you the experience of more than 500 breast reduction surgeries I have done and the impact of the surgery, what it makes on any woman's life. I am Dr. Ajit Gupta, board certified plastic surgeon working in Delhi. So one of the most common myths these women have, especially if they are unmarried, is after the breast reduction surgery, will they be able to get pregnant or breastfeed their child? So let me tell you that the way this surgery is done, we leave a reasonable amount of breast tissue so that it looks nice, it looks good, and at the same time, you can easily breastfeed your child once you become pregnant later on in life. So please don't be worried and have this myth that once you have had a breast surgery, you will not be able to bear child or lactate them. Now the other myth a lot of women has that this surgery involves a lot of scarring. Now, there is some scarring, but actually this is not much of a problem because the more common scar is around the areola or which, which is called as a periareolar scar. Now this region is actually at the confluence of a dark and a lighter skin. So this scar feels nicely and is not much visible. There is one more scar which is used in certain cases which is called as a short vertical scar. Even this scar fades nicely over the next 7 to 8 months. So yes, of course there will be a scar but it is not much of a problem as the healing happens because we also advise you certain ointments to apply and a patient can also go for a laser treatment on the scars. So in most of our cases, patients are reasonably happy with their scars and they are not much of a problem. The third myth a lot of people have that this is a huge big surgery which needs hospitalization for days, they will not be able to work or they will have some huge dresses. So let me clear this for you. The way we do the surgery, in most of our cases, it's a daycare surgery, comes to the hospital in the early morning, get their surgery done and go back home in the evening. And once they go back home, they are removed all the dressings and they just wear a sports bra. Now a sports bra is asked to be worn by these patients because it keeps the breast into a shape in which we have designed on the OT table. So once they go back home, there is no dressing, they can see the result in the evening and just wear a sports bra and can even take bath from the next day. They can resume all their daily activities from the next day. There is just one precaution of avoiding heavy weight lift exercises over their shoulders for the next six weeks. So there is no other precautions to be taken up. They can resume their daily activities absolutely from the next day. Another myth a lot of people have is that the surgery is very painful. Now let me tell you, that the way we do the surgery will not have any pain. In fact, a lot of women have told me 
and this is absolutely painless surgery. The reason why we are able to do this is we use certain nerve blocks during the surgery, so patient is not having any pain after the surgery. They just have a kind of a tightness or a stretching discomfort because understand that the breasts have gone slightly up. Now because of this, they have some amount of tightness feeling or a discomfort feeling which is taken care of by basic painkiller like diclofenac and no stronger painkillers are needed. Another myth and very commonly misunderstood procedure which a lot of people want to do for the breast reduction is liposuction. So let me tell you why the liposuction will not work in a patient who is having a huge breast. So liposuction is a procedure in, when, in which we remove the fat and some amount of the breast tissue may be removed as well. Now understand the breast which is bigger in size, as I said, it's also sagging. Now in, from the sagging breast, if you remove some amount of fat, this breast becomes slightly deflated and actually will sag more. So you may have some reduction in the size of breast which is sagging, but the breast will keep on sagging more. In fact, the sagginess will exaggerate. This will actually cause further problems and exaggerate even your neck and shoulder pain. So liposuction actually should not be recommended for patients requiring breast reduction surgery. So to summarize, it's a very gratifying surgery, one of the most gratifying surgery that we do in our office. It's a daycare procedure. There is hardly any pain, uh, hardly any discomfort, Quick recovery, one can resume their daily activities from next day, no issues in further lactation. Always choose a board certified plastic surgeon to get your surgeries done like breast reduction surgery and all the very best if you are considering the surgery. I've tried to answer most of the questions I'm asked by my patients. If you have any more questions, please write in to us and we'll be there to help you.